Well, this is the row which has led to furious protests by parents and left teachers feeling distraught. Which of schools which made the decision to cancel controversial lessons on gay and transgender rights now be forced to resume them? Well, Sir Michael Wilshaw, the former chief inspector of schools and head of Ofsted, thinks so. He believes parents need to remember we're living in a liberal country where these things are taught to our children. But alongside him is journalist Dilly Hussain, who says if we live in a liberal society, then the views of Muslims, for instance, need to be taken into account. Very good morning to you both. Morning. Um, Dilly Hussain, what is your issue with these lessons for primary school children about lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans relationships and individuals? I mean, in terms of uh, the events that have taken place in Birmingham, I feel it's a symptomatic issue of a wider problem, and that is uh, the increasing sexualization of children in British society, and secondly, the encroachment by the state to essentially intervene in the fundamental rights of parents to okay. raise their children. So a couple of issues there. Um, firstly, the Chief Executive of the Trust, which has introduced the No Outsiders lesson, saying we're not teaching children, for instance, about same-sex couples in the sense of sexual relationships. All they're doing is teaching there are different families. Mm. There may be children at these schools who have two mums or two dads, and it is simply about explaining that doesn't make them outsiders. We need to accept mm. that. What is your issue with that? I think it's not just an issue of same-sex relations, but it's just any type of sexual relations and sexual labels and gender identity and these kind of things which are being exposed to children uh, at this young age. But children know they've <sighs> got, for instance, a mum and a dad. Yes. So, and that's not sexualising children. So why not teach that some children have a mum and a mum or a dad and a dad, or perhaps just one mum and no dad, or I, vice versa. I think the reason why parents have resorted to petitions and protests and withdrawals in Birmingham is that there was a breakdown in communication, uh, a lack of consultation, uh, a lack of transparency. And I don't think any parent in the right state of mind would want to deprive their children of education. I don't mm -hmm. think anyone would want to resort to protest. But, but underpinning this, look, let's cut to the quick here. Yeah. Underpinning this yes. is a belief by the Muslim parents involved in these protests yeah. that being gay is inherently wrong, right? It's part of their belief. Yes. I mean, you're a Muslim. Yes. What do you think is homosexuality, in your view? A sin? Yeah, according to the... the standpoint of my faith yes however that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't coexist in peace with people of different sexual well, you're not coexisting in peace you're making very vocal protests and taking kids out of schools and it's i think it's driven not so much by for the reasons that you say but it's driven by homophobia no right i know I, I, which is I, not actually that peaceful it's actually an I, aggressive act i think that's unequivocally untrue uh peace really? the reason why that is because the sentiments of the parents in birmingham has essentially been the lack of consultation, the lack of transparency, mm. and the lack of communication if with they, from the If schools. the trust had communicated with those parents, perhaps who think yeah. homosexuality is a sin, what would those parents have done? Withdraw their children from those classes? I mean, hypothetically speaking, I can't really make a comment about the, the, issue, the crux of the issue. Here, what would that, you do? What would I do? I mean, they'd have to be, as, as someone who's not a parent, but uh, uh, an uncle to 12 nephews and nieces, Engagement and dialogue is always the first So what point would of... you do if you knew that the school was teaching children, as you say, your nieces yeah. and nephews perhaps, that some children of that age have gay parents, yeah. what would you do in that? I mean, my personal view is that the sexualization of children and the, the exposure to any kind of sexual They're not talking about sex, are they? They're talking no, well, about it relationships. Is because you're subscribing to certain, uh, certain uh, sexual gen uh, identities, okay. isn't Let's it? Let's bring this to Michael. Whether it's same so, Michael, you've heard, you've heard the argument. What is your view of this? You, you've run a lot well, of big is, schools. What's happening uh, outside this school is completely unacceptable. The intimidation of the head teacher and, and senior staff. This is an outstanding school which is doing incredibly well by all its students. It wouldn't have got that outstanding judgment if it didn't engage regularly with parents, and I'm sure it did. Ofsted has been in to look at the materials that they were uh, using in there personal, social and health education lessons and found that the material is to be entirely appropriate. Is it School, sexualized? No, schools have got a job to do in, a, in the sort of society we are, with, with uh, the, the pluralistic society we are, where, we, where um, people have different views and different faiths and different lifestyles. Mm. Schools have got a job to prepare young people from the earliest age to go out into modern Britain and cope in modern Britain and meet people who, have, who are different to them and above all to teach tolerance. And I've heard the argument this shouldn't happen in primary schools. Well, as a, as, as a, as a teacher of long experience and have been into many primary schools, 
you see children who are gay being bullied, mm. and you hear that, that word gay being used in a pejorative way to bully others in school. What age do, do kids go to mosques in this country? I don't think there's a fixed age. Well, I think children as young as six, seven or eight. Right, so you're happy for them to go to mosques and hear teachings, which may include mm. views about homosexuality in a mosque, but you're not happy for them to have it at school? I mean, parents have the right to withdraw their children from mosques and madrasas. Mm. But my like point that. is you're happy for them to hear it in a mosque, but you're not happy, and, and it would be a very negative homophobic view. Not necessarily. That's, it would be. No, no, There's I, no I, mosque I, in this country I, 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 that's I, preaching I, I, tolerance or fairness about homosexuality, no, no, right? I, 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 don't it? I don't think that can be substantiated and be equated to homophobia. Well, well, to, correct me if I'm wrong. No, no, what's being taught... Do mosques in this country, mos Muslim mosques, mosques in this country, do they madrasas, teach the virtues of homosexuality? Mosques and madrasas teach what is enshrined within uh, scripture, and that yeah. is that marriage is a sanctimonious relationship and the only one that's correct, according but, uh, to the Islamic standpoint. Between a man and a woman? Between a man and a woman, right. in, in the sanctity of marriage. Right. Uh, I mean, but, do you think gay people are born gay or do they become gay? What do you think? Is it a choice? Peace, uh, with all due respect, I feel, I feel that we're digressing from the no, issue. I'm, so, I'm, I'm curious yeah, in your answer. I mean, I feel that we're digressing from the issue. Is it a issue? choice, I mean, being gay? I mean, I feel it is a choice, yes. Choice, you think people just decide to be gay? I feel so, yes. Really? You see, when you say that, the problem is, most people in this country think that's a load of baloney, mm. right? And we're supposed to be a tolerant, liberal country. I we're not in Islamabad I, 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 I right? We're in actually in... Why, why is there uh, an, uh, this statement towards we're not in Islamabad? Well, that kind of language is very problematic because, in and of because itself. Because saying it the is. things you've just said no, would be perfectly acceptable and would be widely held beliefs in Islamabad. No. But here in Britain, they are not acceptable. Absolutely not. And they're actually homophobic. No, they're not and That's homophobic. why I say it. No, look, the issue here is... In the case of Birmingham, and I think it's driving a lot of the protests. The, the issue here in Birmingham, mm. as espoused and articulated by the parents, mm. is that there was a lack of communication. Yes, I know, but underpinning it, yeah, and I'm not, you know, I'm not attacking your faith. I'm just saying that one of the bedrocks of being a Muslim mm. in terms of faith is that, as well as other faiths. I mean, let's not single yeah. out. The I, get, I get it. Many I'm not Christians saying that. may feel the and, same and, way. And Jewish, Absolutely. Community, and, and Jewish community. I, I, I get well. it. I, I get it. But this whole thing of homosexuality being a sin, marriage to the man and the woman, so that does not reflect mm. the more liberal way mm. that this country has become. But why is that? And nor is it viewed as tolerant. But why is that being conflated with an inability to coexist? Why is that being conflated? You tell with... me because it's these parents that are outside taking their kids out, yeah. shouting and screaming about it. And when I'm the saying to you, are all I'm saying to you, I'm, I, I, I fear no, that parents, underpinning, underpinning it is parents, basically homophobia. The parents have consistently maintained that they have no issues with the Equalities Act upon which the No Outsiders policy mm. is mm. based upon. But we forget that the Equalities Act 2010 stipulates nine protected characteristics, one of which Including is religion, religion and religious now, belief. So, Sir Michael, Wishel, I mean, this is where there is a conflict, isn't there? Because we want to live in a liberal society where we respect people's mm. different opinions, mm. but we also need to respect people's different faiths. And if that faith thinks that something is intolerable, how do we accommodate that? Well, the same would apply to the Jewish faith, to Christians, yeah. to Catholics and Absolutely. Catholic schools. It's, it's I was head, of, head yeah. of a Catholic school at one time. I would not have done what, uh, uh, what these parents are demanding that I do not teach about tolerance and equality mm. uh, of people who have different views to my, to my own. And that's the issue. And these parents uh, are being whipped up, I'm absolutely sure, because I've worked in, in, in Birmingham on the Trojan Horse Affair some years ago. I'm they're being, they're being whipped up by a group, a small group, of radicals who are determined to get their way. And it's up to the school yeah. and the schools involved and the Department of Education and the local authority to stand up against these parents. Let's take religion out of it. Mm. Children as young as five, mm. learning about different relationships. Some parents, regardless of religion, might actually think, I just think it's too young. I just think it's too young for, you know, for mm. these children to even be thinking about that. You mm. know, it's absolutely fair enough. Yeah. Some people have gay parents, some people have single parents, some people are in care. Yeah. It's absolutely fair enough. But I just don't, I just want my child to go along and play in the playground well, and learn something. OK, um, um, that's up to the school to make that decision as to what age they, they start teaching relationship education. It's not, it's not sex education, it's relationships education. And it's, it's going to be on the statute book from, from next year. And all primary schools are going to have to get 
involved in this. It's really up to the school to decide mm. how and when they do it and whether the materials are right. And Ofsted has been in it's so and looked sensitive. at it and it's said so it's sensitive. entirely appropriate. Is it not better to absolutely keep the parents on board at it, all stages? It is, but I, I come back to that point I made earlier. I have seen the most terrible, vicious bullying mm. of gay people in school and that word gay being used mm. as a, in a pejorative term. So the earlier the youngsters know right. that it's wrong to call, use these names, the better. And Dilly, one of the problems here, and you know, I, I understand that it's, a, you know, it's part of your faith to think this, the problem is that when it comes over in such an intolerant way as it does when you say it out loud, that these does young... It? Does it? Yes. According Actually, to you, if you're a young gay person at school yeah. in this country, okay. and you have you as a leading you know, spokesman for the Muslim community sitting here on national television yeah. saying homosexuality is sinful, yeah. marriage is between a man and woman, and all the rest of it, actually, if you are a young gay person, you're thinking, wow, this but, guy hates but, me. But, but if a gay person does not subscribe to these theological and religious views, mm. then I don't understand why it would necessarily be harmful. Why is there conflation between a disagreement in philosophical, moral and religious views and an inability to live and coexist in peace. We do it in every other facet of life and society. Do, I just, do you agree with I, that? I, no, I, no, I, I just want to echo something else that Sir Wilshaw mm. did say in his BBC Radio 4 interview, and that is that whilst he believes that it should be imposed, that there still needs to be a level of consultation with parents, and that's something which the parents in Birmingham who are protesting mm. have said. But could you imagine any scenario where any Muslim parent involved in these protests is ever going to allow any discussion about anything that's pro-homosexuality or gay relationships in school. Well, according to the parents in Birmingham, the ones that we have been interacting with, um, they've said that it's not necessarily uh, with regards to the No Outsiders programme. It's not being taught as an alternative relation. It's been proselytised. For example, I just want to quickly make, give this what example. What, you mean what, that what, teachers are advocating no, no, what, that Yeah, so, so what does that mean? But that's, no, not, well, hold, well, that, that's not the case. What children, have said, what children have said to their parents is as such, that when uh, a proposition has been portrayed where there's two dads or two mums, mm. that sh when, when children have conveyed that, you know, this is something wrong mm. or something that's, you know, we've been taught to be incorrect, that they were actually, that people who espouse these views are considered as an outsider of the no-outsiders policy. Well, yeah. That's right. Yes. So, but that's right. So, does the, so therefore, the Equalities Act for 2000. But again, I come back to my comment Equalities about my comment about Islamabad was not to be inflammatory; it's to be realistic. Well, it, it, no, it, it let, me explain, let me explain to you what I meant. Yeah. And actually, it was a line I took from the briefing notes I on knew, some yes. article. And it's this: is that in Islamabad, none of this would be remotely controversial because every parent, uh, every school would. They'd all be signing up. But we're to... not dealing with people in the summer no. We're dealing with British citizens. I, I get exactly. it. We're, dealing, we're is, dealing with British citizens. I get here. it. But you keep talking about how tolerant you are and how inclusive you want to be, and yet your faith, as as you've already laid out, is to many people encouraging homophobia. Mm. These kids Being... are going to school. You say are hearing, you know, you're wrong. Mm. Well, yeah, most people in this country think that homophobia is wrong. Well, would you expect? But they're being taught homophobia. Well, that's not true. No? No. So mosques in this country because don't, there is a conflict don't say that homosexuality is a no, sin? I, I, it's homophobia. Okay. I, I, no, that's no. not homophobia. No, it's no. a theological and religious standpoint. So saying that something is sinful and yes. wrong yes. and shouldn't be happening yes. is not homophobic. homophobia? Of course not. Because it's not inciting violence or hatred. Isn't it? No. Isn't it invite, inciting people to think these people are bad, no, wrong people? No, no. So do really? You said straight do, do, Yeah, absolutely. Do we not live in a society where we ardently disagree on so many major issues about man, life and universe? Mm. Do we not? Does that necessarily mean that we hate the people that we disagree with? Of course not. Mm. So, Michael? Well, these parents have behaved disgracefully. As I say, I think they've probably been whipped up into, into a fury by, by, by others. I do hope that the, the head teachers reinstate the curriculum. Mm. I do hope that they're properly supported by the Department of Education and by the local authority and by these new regional schools commissioners. If they're not, they'll be picked off and, and, and isolated and being put under, under unfair pressure. And this will spread elsewhere, as I believe it already is, mm. in other cities across the country. It's unacceptable what's happening, and we've got to make what it What is your... Final point to you, Dilly. Yeah. What is your message to... There's a, Big feature in The Guardian today, yes. interviews with four or five gay Muslims in Britain, right? Mm. What is your message to gay Muslims in Britain? We've heard you yeah. sit here describing their sexuality as sinful, mm. that it's wrong and that it shouldn't be happening. What, what do you say to them? If they're watching this go, well, hang on, what do you mean? I'm gay and I'm Muslim. Inclinations towards the same sex uh, within Islam and other Abrahamic faiths and other organised religions 
is no different to any other sin. And that is that just because you have engaged in this sin or are thinking about engaging it does not mean you have been excommunicated from your faith. But the ultimate point I would like to make, Piers, mm. is that moving forward to avoid situations that we have seen in Birmingham, that there has to be engagement and dialogue and transparency between schools and parents. But I don't think the trouble is, I don't think you're ever going to have any dialogue which involves any form of genuine tolerance about homosexuality. Well, unless it happens, you won't know, Piers. Because there is, a, a, there is a, just a, an endemic clash with the religion. Mm. That's the problem, isn't it? Well, we, there needs to be dialogue. Unless that happens, we won't know. But are you ever going to accept? A lesson where two mummies is taught? You wouldn't. That's the problem, isn't it? I, I can't speak on behalf of three million The, the dialogue here. doesn't mean turning up outside the school gates and shouting at teachers and head teachers. Mm. OK, we've got to leave it there. It's an interesting debate. You know, there'll be lots of Muslim viewers watching this, interested to hear your view about this. It's clearly it's causing a lot of controversy, a lot of protests. Well, and as a lot you of point out, it isn't just Muslim viewers no, who would uh, agree that homosexuality is a, a, is a sin, but yeah. the whole point about these lessons is to teach that it's actually not. Anyway. Uh, interesting debate. Thank you both very much for coming. Thank I you. appreciate it. Lots more to come. You're watching Good Morning Britain on ITV.